Everyone, welcome back to the shop. It is the end of September and the flying season up here around Chicago is almost done. Got two new projects coming down the pike. Let's get inside the shop. Let's get started. All right, hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. It's been about a month and a half since I've done anything down in the shop. We had a family emergency um, uh, come about probably about a month and a half ago. Um, and that used up about three plus weeks of just dedicating any free time uh, just to get through it. And everything is fine. Everybody's good. So that's, that's the most important part. Um, that and then work. Little changes at work. Um, it's been an interesting uh, couple months uh, so it, it's I've got a little bit of time today uh, and this is the 23rd 24th of September and then uh, the next day off is about a week eight days something like that away from now so it's still busy so um, what I want to do is I want to my glasses are falling down <laughs> I want to uh, uh, First, talk about the two projects real quick. Uh, the first project that we're going to be doing is on the bench right now. You can kind of see a little bit of it right here. We'll get back to that soon. Uh, the second project, the second project is going to be a DR1. Um, it's an Arizona models, and I think it's a fifth scale DR1 um, that I got from my uh, from my pseudo stepdad Larry. Um, because, you know, for the last decade, I've been calling it, you know, my DR1. So he just decided to hand it off to me. He started it probably when I first met him 15, 16 years ago, 17 years ago. Um, and that's as far as the guy, he, he got it started. Um, so that one will be after this one. Um, so it's going to be a winter of, of two projects because... It's this time of year where, you know, outside I'm battling wind today. Today would have been a nice flyable day, but the winds are gusts at 30, so it, it ended up being a non-flyable day. So anyway, so it's so the second part of the the winter break from flying will be will be the uh, the DR1. I just have to figure out how far I want to go with that one. Um, here's the big one. Here, here's what we're working on now. This is. And almost ready to cover and it was uh, it's it, it's it's a it's a tiger moth <laughs> and it was this is how far back this one goes this one that was purchased by a good friend of mine um, lives out in Southern California just outside of San Diego and it was purchased from helmet at uh, diamond motorsports or motor model sports you know it's a diamond model sports um, I want to say it was probably 29, between 2008 and 2010-ish, I could be wrong, because I think shortly after that he sold it, and uh, now it ended up moving, I think, down to Florida, and now it's up in North Carolina, but it was a different owner now. Um, so what this is, this is a, let me, let me give you a little quick heads up on one. This is an almost ready to cover model. And the thing with almost ready to cover is it's almost ready to cover. I mean, they did a really nice job. You could tell that I think this was done um, before a lot of the stuff was getting done out of China. I, I want to say this is probably Vietnam era stuff because it's, or Thailand, it's very nicely crafted. And if you were able to put your, this part slides out. So that's, so if it looks a little sloppy here, that's why that looks sloppy. But all the lines are super smooth and nice on this plane. The problem that I'm mentally having with this right now, here's the top wing, there's the bottom wing. The problem is on the top wing, they've got ailerons. In real life, Tiger Moss didn't have ailerons on the top wing. Yes, this is, this is what I've been thinking about for the past couple days down here in the shop. So anyway, let me show you what we're going to put in it. We're going gas. Um, and I got this uh, probably about a week, week and a half ago from uh, Motion RC. Yeah, Jeff, I drove over to Motion RC 
took me seven minutes anyway uh it, what we're gonna put in it is we're gonna that was a that was a little shout out to jeff's custom rc you guys might have seen his channel if you haven't go ahead and just search it on youtube jeff's custom rc it's good stuff so anyway uh yeah we, i decided to go gas and um so because they're an importer uh instead of going through uh hobby king i i go to them for this stuff because it ends up costing me less money and uh, they're a local company to me or a distributorship they're good people so i did that and then i ended up getting a uh also a pitts muffle muffler too as well i've just got to figure out what i'm going to have to do to this section of the plane up front to make everything fit but right now i'm not that concerned with this as i am with that so that's what this video is going to be about what do I want to do with that? All right, so what we've got, I've got three potential, three potential ways um, that I can go ahead and, and, and put the airplane together. I can either, the, the, the most simple way would be to go ahead and run four ailerons on a Tiger Moth. Yeah, I'll catch grief for that. But on the other hand, it's it's got other issues be, besides that, that if somebody really wanted to, to pull hairs on it, um, it it's it's gonna be a lot smoother than a tiger moth. And it's the way that it's the way the arc with the arc, almost ready to cover, the way the airplane was built. Um, it's gonna be it's kind of a pseudo scale or a semi scale, if you wanna call it that. Um, so that's where if I was flying it with four ailerons it's going to be a fun plane to fly. Um, the next way I can do it, and it's a little more difficult, as you can see, I'm going from the easy to the hard here. What I can do is I can go ahead and I can make the aileron a solid piece. I can come in, I can end up running a filler in here, then on the backside, cut out a wedge, glue it in there, and then just make sure it's all sanded down and I erase everything that looks like an aileron on it. And that's how it would look. Would it still look exactly like a like a tiger moth? You know, 50 feet away, yeah, it looked like a really good tiger moth. So that is the two easier ways to do it. Now, because I'm gonna have to get everything spun around so you can see my little presentation I have, I've got on the, uh, on the computer. The most complex way is going to be uh, to do it as a, st a stomp. So, cutting off the wingtips and making circular wingtips on it, it's not that big of a deal. Um, you know, some people are going to say, hey, Bud, how are you going to do it? So, if this is how Bud's going to do it. If I'm going to do it this way, I still have not decided yet. What I did, I'm just moving stuff around here. What I did on my big biplane, the classic biplane or classic bike build, um, I did a, 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 a photo montage um, of that because that was back in, oh my gosh, that was 13 years ago. I, I started, um, I think it was the first weekend in November of uh, 2006. So what I did with that one was because I, I changed the tail. I didn't like the way that the tail looked and I wanted to to redesign it slightly uh, and then I wanted to make it out of laminated wood. Hear that? Somebody still likes me. Um, I uh, So anyway, what I did was I took some pink foam and I, the modifications I did off the plans, I just kind of traced around the outside of this um sanded it down and then it's around here somewhere still uh it's beeswax on the outside of it and then with this was what i took some 16th inch balsa cut it into strips and this is all 3 8 of an inch on a tiger moth so if i was going to do it for the for the stomp it's going to be the same thing i'm going to have it set up so that it's going to work off of 3 8 and if when you see when you see the the plans on the stomp on the computer, um, it, it's gonna the tail's not gonna be right, the wings aren't gonna be right. The turtle deck, 
on a Tiger Moth was actually sheeted and it had storage, had a storage compartment up here on this side. You'll see in the pictures. What I'm going to have to do on this is I'm going to have to bring the turtle deck farther back because right now I still have to get the exact measurement on it but because the horizontal stabilizer is shorter, it's not as deep, it's not six and a half inches like it is on the Tiger Moth, I think it's closer to four and a quarter. So it's going to have to come back to about here, which is going to make things m more difficult than, than I would like to because I don't want to have to build this up higher and I don't really want to make the horizontal stabilizer thinner. So I'm going to end up having to cut down into this piece of balsa here a little bit just so I can drop it. And you know when it's done and covered you wouldn't see it. So that's... This is this is what I do. <laughs> I overcomplicate everything but it's what I do. So, uh, so that's the way that I would have to do it and if I... It, if I'm going to set it up so everything's going to be laminated because it's going to be like start like I started saying earlier, 16th inch balsa, uh, get it wet, get it with warm water, bend it around it, pin everything in place, and then uh, put some. And it all depends what kind of glue I want to use. I think I use just regular uh, uh, wood glue, some uh, tight bond. Um, so you put your wax paper down. You've got your former with the beeswax around the outside of it, so that way you can't stick to it. And then at that point, you go right ahead and you start, put your first section on, and then on top of that, you can put your next section of um, yellow glue or white glue, uh, tight bond. You can do it where if you wanted to put the first three layers together, you could do it really quick, but you've got to be fast on starting to wrap around it. Um, because what you could do is if you want to do three layers and then let that set up for a few hours, go ahead and do another three layers on top of it and then just pin everything out. And then once it's all done completed, all you're doing is you're cutting where you have to cut. So that way where your hinge line's gonna be up on the top for the, for the uh, horizontal stabilizer, well, it's actually gonna be up in the front because of the way that that one is, it's got the counterbalance on it. You would cut there and then you'd cut down to the bottom. So it's, uh, it's actually very easy to put together um, the tail section as well as the, as the wing tips um, so that you're going to remain very light and it'll probably be lighter than what they've got on this plane already uh, because it is laminated and it's stronger you don't have to have as much balsa back there um, but it's much more durable I've had my big biplane um, you know my error entirely it's in both times it's because of wet grass um, it came in and once it starts rotating that tail up you can't stop it it's going over and it's been upside down twice so out of the 70 something flights I've had it's been upside down twice and that's a lot of weight coming down on top of that tail and I've never had a single problem with the uh, uh, with the tail on the airplane because it's strong it's laminated and it's gonna last a lifetime well lifetime of the plane so all right let me get things spun around and I'll show you what things look like and how I would have to go ahead and figure out how big the H tab's got to be how big the vertical the, the fin or the vertical stabilizer and then the rudder how that's because it's going to be a guessing game because I'm trying to transfer everything from a uh, a quarter scale sized uh, stomp to a fifth scale sized um, tiger moth so it's going to be fun. All right, this is where things are going to start getting confusing on everything that's got to be done and. Uh, where I'm going to have to make the cuts and how I'm going to get the measurements on it. All right, so these are just the, uh, the first couple pictures are just the three view drawings. And any of you guys that want to go ahead and build a plane, even if it's from a kit or it's from a set of plans. So if you want to build that plane, go online and try to find a three view drawing. It's something that the people that taught me uh, how to put together RC planes and to build them right. Um, because yes, you have to learn from people that have done it before and uh, That's where you find out what mistakes they made and uh, they teach you how not to make the same mistakes So I've made all my own mistakes So anyway, all right So what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna have to change out the tail We're gonna have to change out the horizontal stabilizer and elevator and of course the, the wing tips are gonna have to be cut off and be rounded So we're gonna try to turn if we're gonna do it. We're gonna turn this plane into this plane 
and hopefully we don't have any glare coming down because I'm just seeing reflections bouncing all off the screen. So what we're going to try to do is to turn it into a stomp. It's the same exact fuselage that they have on a Tiger Moth. It's, and the only difference is they ended up rounding the wingtips and changed the whole tail. They changed it more for performance because this is, I believe it was the French, because I know that this was done in Belgium, um, but it was set up as a trainer for uh, for military. So it's because it, you'll see versions of this with a canopy on it, because that was the more military version of it was it was done with a canopy on the top. So anyway, let's take this picture, and we're going to try to figure out what they had to do to shorten the length. Because remember the horizontal stabilizer came up to about here so and because they moved it back what they had to do to the plane to move it back okay this is a picture of a tiger moth and this is how they did it. and of course it was the australian war memorial so this is part of their, their their pictures you can get them online so hopefully they don't throw a copyright claim down on me for this but we're going to go ahead and use it so what they did on that was, of course, you can see the wooden plywood over the top of it. So the turtle deck did not have stringers. It had this on it, then it had the cargo uh, compartment on it. Now, as you can see, what they did on the, uh, the stomp, they used stringers. So this was not covered. So if I, if I decide to take the Taylor craft that I've got here and turn it into a stop, it's, I'm not putting stringers on it. This is, this is where it's going to be. It's either going to be a morphed tiger moth or a morphed stop. That way I'm not messing with, cause I don't want to have to cut that apart and put stringers in. Cause I just really don't. Um, so what we were doing is we'd go ahead and the tail is not going to have the standoffs, uh, the stringers on it standing proud like it is in real life. I'm going to build it so that it's aerodynamic, just like the tiger moth, just because I just don't want to have to take the time because this is just going to be, I want to do a quick, a quicker build either way I go on this one. Um, so I don't want to have to do too much, you know, cutting. So I was actually able to find uh, the, the drawings uh, of a kit that, that was available. It's a quarter scale stop. So what I, you have to do is you're going to have to try to figure, because right now we're looking at everything really small. We need to figure out what percentage of the full size do we need. Well, it's pretty easy because we're going from a quarter scale down to a fifth scale. So all we have to do is just, sorry about that. When we go from, because these are just pictures, when we go over to this, which is a PDF file, all we have to do is just tick, come up to the top up here and just turn it up to 80%. So this is gonna be the real size. So this is what I have to take and take some wax paper, however I wanna do it, because it's gonna be kind of a pain in the butt. You're gonna have to do it in stages. So I would just come in and just trace around the outside of this. So just as long as I get half of it done, I could translate that into just double it up translate it into two so and what you do is if you're going to make the template you're going to make a full template all the way around it so because that this ends here i don't have to have this bend in it because this down here would primarily be something you're just going to sand out because you've got you pretty much have a stringer coming down here so what this would be is this would just come out and it could be a solid piece just like i and i'll show it to you later uh, just like I did on the rod, or excuse me, the horizontal stabilizer elevator on the big biplane. It's just a one solid piece. So I'd have to make one of those, and then I'd have to come in and do the same exact thing for the uh, for the rudder. So it'd just be come over here, click on it, go up to eighty percent, and that's how big that's how big the rudder's going to be. So that's that's going to be easy enough for me to do for those two pieces and the same thing is that this would come all the way across here and because it's joined up here the hinge line is right here comes up straight but here's where they get cut apart so this will get cut right down here and even though this shows going all the way up to the top this will be solid and this will come up and probably terminate into the piece of wood here just so that the outside laminated is going to be the strongest part all right so the wing tip same thing 80 percent boom so what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to take measurements. Sorry about that, I clipped on it. So I'm gonna to to take measurements to figure out where this needs to come in, where this last rib needs to be, because that's where everything's gonna to attach to. So that's something that I'll have to do, not from here, but take measurements on the wings. Uh, and it's just gonna make it interesting. But the way that I was able to, to clarify that this was the, the proper height 
is I came in and with my little uh, ruler, I came in and measured, you know, metrically. So, and this came out to be 280 millimeters, and then I went and measured the wing, and the wing from, from the front to the back is 278 millimeters, so I figured that's close enough. So that gives me the proper uh, dimensions on how everything needs to be made, and how I'd go ahead and make a former for this too, so I can do the same thing and just go ahead and laminate it. I could come in with just strip if I wanted to and do it this way, but if I'm laminating the rear, I'll probably do the wing tips too, just to make them stronger. All right, for all of you guys that have had the patience to watch till the end of this video, um, I want your thoughts uh, on the way you guys would like to see it built. I mean, I kind of, I kind of know how. I've got a good idea on how some of my friends want it built. Most of them, uh, they're just going to come out and say, "Hey, build it any way you want to build it." Um, Tim, the guy I got the plane from, uh, Tim. Uh, I know you want me to just go ahead and just do it the easiest way, which is still always, always an option. Because if I do it the easiest way, it's going to be real easy. The fuselage is, and the wings are going to be yellow. This is going to stay black, and then it's the top part of the fuselage where this joins in. It's going to be a black stripe that comes all the way, so the whole top will be black, and then there'll be yellow, yellow wing tips. So it's, uh, and that's about as easy. Um, is you can get and you know regardless even if I even if I decide to get rid of the uh, um, the upper ailerons and, and pretty much glue everything back in again it's still gonna be painted the same way now if I go with the stomp I can go ahead and do whatever the heck I want with it and I've seen some really cool um, paint jobs on those because they still use them and it's, it's a nice aerobatic plane but if it's a tiger moth, I want it to remain, you know, pr pretty much just a nice, simple tiger moth paint job. So anyway, uh, hope to hear all your thoughts. And, uh, you know, don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, enjoy watching the videos. Later.